Hi everyone. Today I have with me Hemant Malia, who's a fellow at the Council on Energy, Environment and Water, and leads its industrial sustainability team. I'm Neera Majumdar, and I work in the outreach team as the editor. Hemant, it's been quite the year. 2024 has seen a lot. What it has definitely seen is a greener push in its budget. We have made international commitments, and our target to go net zero by 2070 is still going strong. But we have also seen heavy climate impacts and weather events this year. In the mid of all this, to transition, CW's latest study shows that we will face challenges. And what is it that we'll exactly need to go net zero by 2070? So, can you explain to me what the Nexus study, as we call it, is about, and what's unique about it? So, the first question we had in our minds was: uh, We have committed to net zero. We know that we need a lot of RE, solar, and wind. Do we have that potential in India or not? Having said that, we know that solar relies on land and to produce green hydrogen, we need a lot of water. And the second question then was, um, you know, what are the challenges that we we'll face? So it's really understanding the interaction of all these variables and how they impact overall production of either power or green hydrogen in the country is what we call the next study. What we have done is we have analyzed uh, you know, these variables at a very minute level. We have divided the entire country's landmass into 5 by 5 square kilometer pixels and then understood what are the variables that are associated with those pixels and how they will influence our regeneration and green hydrogen production. So what according to you are the three biggest findings of the study? We never expected Madhya Pradesh and Odisha to have large solar potential because we don't see a lot of uh, projects being developed in those states. However, they are one of the or a couple of the top states in the country with significant RE potential and needs to be tapped into. Secondly, we saw a lot more seasonality. The way we define seasonality in solar is that if there is a significant variation in how much electricity is generated, could be very, you know, different factors ranging from, uh, you know, more monsoon uh, clouds covering uh, the solar parks. Um, or it could be just shifts in you know wind patterns, etc. And finally, in terms of green hydrogen, we would have thought that there water might be an issue. Mm -hmm. However, we have not seen that. There is a number when I was reading the study that I came across and I didn't mention. Um, it mentioned that there was a potential of around 24,000 gigawatts of renewable energy in India. Um, that is a massive number and someone like me who's an ex-journalist, my eye glints up at that number. Tell me why I shouldn't quote it as my headline number. So that 24,000 number definitely is a large number, should be quoted but with caveats. We know in the real world there are other challenges that we cannot necessarily analyze with the data that we have. Uh, a more recent example is that in Rajasthan, where we have seen that although there's a lot of potential, you know, laying transmission lines was a challenge given, you know, it ran through ecologically sensitive zones where the great Indian bustard has its habitat. So those constraints will limit how much of the total 24,000 will actually be realized. Apart from that, there is the matter of, you know, what is the cost of electricity generation? So you might have the potential, but not all of the potential is at the same cost of generation. So overall, top line number is right, but comes with all these caveats. How much does India need to go net zero and do we have it? Previously, CW has analyzed this uh, when the country committed to the 2017 net zero. Our analysis indicated that we need roughly 5,600 gigawatts of uh, solar and potentially 1,800 gigawatts of wind. Uh, we see that wind might be a little bit of a challenge given that a lot of our potential drives in offshore where cost of generation is relatively higher compared to onshore generation. Solar, on the other end, should be relatively straightforward if you have uh, the right you know, policies in place to address some of the constraints. The 7,000 gigawatts of RE that India needs to go net zero by 2070 is a massive number, but it will also come with a set of challenges and constraints, and some of them will play out simultaneously. As India uh, develops over the next decades and as scales up RE, do you see population density and land conflicts as being a major concern? They are both highly correlated is what we have seen. Uh, and it will become a problem as we scale up, uh, especially social conflicts. Uh, one of the challenges is that the classification of land in India uh, is really a colonial vestige. For example, wastelands are classified as such because they do not have any economic output. 
but that does not necessarily mean that the communities don't rely on those parcels of land. So those are issues that will crop up as we scale up Adi. Uh, we don't see that as being a big problem up to 500 gigawatts, but beyond that, we'll start tapping into areas that already have pre-existing conflicts, or you could end up in areas where uh, you have high population density, more than 400 people per square kilometer, and you'll see more social conflicts you know, come up. And what about earthquakes and climate risks? Our earlier study, this year's CW study, showed that monsoon patterns are changing due to climate change. And a lot of our RA is being built out on the western coast, right? Um, wind and solar both. So if it rains there more, what is the impact of um, such events, climate risks and earthquakes? We don't see earthquakes as being a huge problem, at least in the first few thousand gigawatts uh, of deployment. One can say that it could be overcome by uh, developing earthquake resistant infrastructures. You know, more closely on the climate uh, risk part, we do see it as a bigger problem. Uh, you mentioned rainfall. Uh, cloud cover can directly impact how much RE is generated, uh, especially in solar parks. Um, a new issue that we are seeing, which is uh, common not just in the RE development sector but across industry, is that of insurance. Um, insurance companies are not very willing to insure areas um, and assets which are in high climate risk areas. What do you hope policymakers, both at the central and state level, take away from the CW study um, and do as next steps? I think first and foremost, uh, it answers the questions to policymakers on whether we have sufficient RT or not. Uh, the second is looking at policies from a longer term perspective and not building out capacity in a few hundred gigawatts at a time because addressing some of these constraints and issues will require many, many years. And what is the message you hope businesses and industry, especially RE, takes out of this study? For the RE development sector, land is going to be the biggest resource apart from technology and capital. Therefore, they need to look at social conflicts seriously and try and avoid them uh, in the early stages of project development. We will do a quick rapid fire on CW's latest Nexus study because everybody is doing it. Um, Hemant, are you ready for this? I am. The state you see the highest RE potential in, in India? Rajasthan. The state you see the highest green hydrogen potential in, in India? Gujarat considering cost and volumes. Uh, land or water, what is the bigger constraint? Both land in terms of availability, water in terms of management. Seismic zones, concern or not? Not at least for a few thousand gigawatts deployment. Green hydrogen, future game changer or still too costly? Game changer but needs perseverance. Are we an uh, option for our dense urban cities? The rooftop solar. Top priority for policymakers, land banks or water policies? Both. And finally, can India go net zero? Absolutely, we have to. On that note, to know how minutely this would be done across land, water and sea, read CW's latest study, Renewable Energy, Green Hydrogen, Land, Water Nexus in India. We'll be sharing link to that. And thank you for watching today.